Welcome to the next module of the course. In this module, we will build our first neural network model for image classification task. In this exercise, we will be using tf.keras API. Uh, we are going to build uh, a model to classify images and uh, for this exercise, we use a fashion MNIST data set. Fashion MNIST data set is very, very similar to MNIST data set that we used earlier for building hello world model for tensorflow. The fashion MNIST data set has 10 labels of different fashion accessories. There are 60,000 uh, images in the training set of fashion MNIST and 10,000 images in the test set. Each image is 28 by 28 uh, pixel in size and is associated with exactly one label. So, uh, I would like to uh, tell you that uh, when, when you are going through this particular collab, uh, I would urge you to stop collab if you are not, uh, if, if you want to try things on your own and uh, you know uh, open a separate collab notebook and uh, try coding the things that you see on your screen. That will help you to uh, understand, uh, understand the TensorFlow Keras API better. So, let us begin. Uh, to begin with, we first connect to the Colab runtime, Colab's cloud runtime specifically. And the TensorFlow 2.0 may not be installed in this runtime. So, to begin with, we first install TensorFlow uh, 2.0 uh, using the pip command, pip install command. And uh, you know, whenever command start with excl uh, exclamation mark, uh, this particular command runs uh, on the system, at it, it will install TensorFlow 2.0 uh, uh, SDK or API on the system. So let's let's do it. So you can see that uh, in this particular runtime, the TensorFlow 2.0 API is already available. So uh, nothing happened. If this API is not available, TensorFlow will be downloaded and then installed in the cloud runtime. Once we download this TensorFlow 2.0 uh, the next task is to import the libraries that are required for us uh, in, in, in building the model. So we will be using Keras API, so we are going to import the Keras uh, library uh, and uh, we are going to use uh, NumPy for uh, manipulating and storing the data. So uh, we will uh, also import NumPy and we are going to use matplotlib.pyplot for plotting uh, various images uh, of objects in fashion MNIST data set. So, we are also going to uh, import that particular thing. Finally, we will make sure that we have the right TensorFlow version uh, loaded on, on the Colab runtime. We, we ensure that by printing the tf uh, dot uh, uh, tf dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore. So, uh, this particular command uh, prints a tf version. So, uh, let us run this and make sure that we have tf2.0 beta1 uh, installed and you can see that uh, it actually printed a tf uh, version which is 2.0.0.0 dash beta1. So uh, we, we essentially ensure that we have the right version of TensorFlow installed on the Colab runtime. So the next task uh, as we talked in one of my previous, uh, one of my previous sessions that in order to build machine learning models we require data. So data is the first prerequisite for machine learning model and in this exercise fashion MNIST is the data set that we are going to use. We are going to use our training data uh, in fashion MNIST for training our model. Uh, the training data uh, is, uh, so the training data in this particular data set has an image and associated label and the image is uh, presented to us in, in form of 28 by 28 pixels and each image has exactly one label associated with it and there are 10 such possible labels. The labels are given IDs uh, ranging from 0 to 9. And uh, one more important thing to note here is the MNIST data set 
is uh, so all the images in MNIST data set are all grayscale images. Uh, so, you can uh, see the MNIST data set some of the images are printed on the screen uh, right over here. And these are uh, images of objects from different classes. So, you can see that this is an image from one class, these are uh, these are tops, then bottoms uh, from the another class, uh, then there are uh, some, uh, some shoes that form another class, then there are bags and so on. So, fortunately uh, the fashion MNIST data set is already present in TensorFlow and since this data set is already present in TensorFlow, we can directly import and load the data from TensorFlow. Uh, if your data set is not present in the TensorFlow, we will have to uh, write, we will have to write uh, or, or we have to make provisions for making sure that our data set is available in TensorFlow and we have covered this in one of our previous modules. So, you can go back and uh, refer to that if you want to bring in your own data in TensorFlow. But for the, for the purpose of this exercise or, or the data set that we are using here which is fashion MNIST data set is already present. So, uh, we will use uh, fashion MNIST dot load data command to load, uh, load the data uh, in, the, in the collab. And this load data command essentially returns us 4 NumPy arrays. Uh, so, 2 arrays corresponds to training data and the other 2 correspond to the test data. Within training data, we have 1 array of train images and uh, 1 array for training labels. Uh, similarly, in test, we have 1 array for test images and 1 array for training, uh, 1 array for test labels. And uh, as, as we, uh, as we uh, uh, you know, uh, said earlier, each image is 28 by 28 numpy array and uh, with uh, and and the pixel value uh, in each of the cell of this array ranges from 0 to 255 and the labels uh, are an array of integers from 0 to 9 and you can see uh, uh, you can you can see uh, all the labels and the corresponding class name displayed over here Since these class names are not included in the data set, we will actually store them in an array so that we can use it later uh, to print the name of the class along with each image. Uh, this will be used uh, later when we are exploring our data set or whenever uh, we are trying to uh, print the actual label and the predicted label. So, for all those purposes, this particular uh, list will be very useful. So, uh, if we execute this particular thing, uh, we will get all the class names uh, in, in, in the list in the, in the array. So, let us uh, execute couple of previous cells, we have executed up to this point. Uh, let us execute, let us first load the fashion MNIST data set and uh, let us put the class names in the class name array. Now, let us explore the data set and see how exactly uh, image looks like. So, before looking into image, so you can see that train image is, is of the shape 60,028 by 28. This 28 by 28 here is the pixel size of each image as, and we have 60,000 such kind of images in train images, image numpy array. Likewise, there are 60,000 labels in the training set. Uh, so, it is good to see that there, exact, there are exactly 60,000 images and 60,000 labels uh, corresponding, uh, so one label corresponding to every image. So, this particular sanity check is, uh, is, 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 is very nice to uh, confirm. And then we said that each label is integer between 0 to 9, let us confirm it by uh, checking the training labels and you can see that there are labels, um, some labels are displayed which are between 0 to 9. Uh, Let us also uh, do sanity check on the test set. Test set has shaped 10,028 by 28. There are 10,000 test images each of size 28 by 28. So, uh, you, can, you can observe that the test image uh, has exactly the same, uh, uh, same pixel size and that as the training image which is a good thing. And the test has uh, 10,000 uh, in, in the test labels has 10,000 uh, 10, items in it. So, uh, you know here the test image shape, uh, the, the, the number of test images and number of labels are matching uh, which is a good, uh, which is a good sign. Uh, so, this 
so by, by doing this particular exercise we made sure that our data is, um, is, is clean and there are no, uh, no missing labels or any such kind of problems there. So the first thing that we do uh, after, we, uh, after, after getting data is exploration we, we, just, do, we just did. Now after exploring the data uh, it is important to pre-process the data. In the data pre-processing step we uh, generally uh, transform the data, we normalize the data. Uh, so let us see uh, how, uh, how we uh, do that in case of images. But before normalizing the data let us uh, plot an image and see uh, how it looks like. So we will be using uh, IM show uh, method of plot and we will be uh, you know plotting the first image in the train image uh, from the train image numpy array and uh, along with image we will introduce a color bar and uh, we do plot dot show to actually print the image. So you can see an image of an ankle boot on the screen. Uh, so you can see that there are exactly 28 uh, rows and 28 columns. Uh, each, uh, each cell in this array corresponds to one pixel value and pixel values range from 0 to 255. So this is the, the color coding of the pixel value. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a visual representation of the first image. Now uh, as part of image normalization what we will do is we will uh, make sure that each pixel value ranges from 0 to 1. And uh, the, the simplest way to make sure that each pixel value uh, ranges from 0 to 1 is uh, uh, we, ca we can do that by dividing each pixel value by the range of pixel value which goes from 0 to 255. Uh, so, uh, so, so essentially we can simply divide uh, each pixel value by, uh, by 255 and this will make sure that each pixel, uh, each pixel has value between 0 to 1. So uh, after performing these two, this particular operation uh, by, by dividing each training image by 255, we get all 10 images where each pixel value is between 0 to 1. We do the same thing on the test data and uh, in order to make sure that training data and test data is pre-processed uh, or specifically normalized in this case uh, in exactly the same way. It is very important uh, uh, to, uh, to ensure uh, this particular um, step that we use exactly the same way of normalizing across training and test data. Let us run this particular cell and uh, this cell has normal. Now, now the train images and test images numpy array contains normalized values for each of the images. Let us let us confirm, let us confirm that the data is in correct format and uh, we, uh, we are uh, and, 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 and we have normalized it correctly. So we will again use uh, im dot, uh, plot dot im show function to print each of the image. So here what we do is uh, we are going to plot uh, first 25 images uh, that is specified in a for loop here. And uh, we are going to uh, have a subplot of size 5 by 5. We will add x and y ticks uh, we, and, and then finally we will do im show. In im show we are going to uh, print ith image. And along with uh, the image we are going to print the class name of the image that we had stored in the class name array. And class name will be stored as, an, uh, uh, as, uh, as a label on x axis. And finally, uh, we, uh, we print all these images using plot.show method. So now you can see that uh, each image is printed here along with uh, their names uh, just below, uh, below, uh, below the object. So uh, we have plotted 25 images in, uh, in 5 by 5 grid. Each row has 5 images and uh, there are 5 such kind of, uh, five such kind of rows. Okay, now that uh, we have explored the data, normalized it, visualized the data, the next task is the core task of model building. Uh, in this case, we are going to use a neural network uh, uh, model for classifying the images. Let us uh, look at the architecture of the neural network model before uh, getting into the code. 
So we essentially have a 28 by 28 image where so there are 28 rows and 28 columns and each cell has a value between 0 to 1 between 0 to 1 and uh, now what we are going to do is we want to uh, essentially uh, use this pixel information to learn the label right so essentially we are trying to design a function that takes into this particular image and uh, it maps this particular image to labels and we have labels possible labels are between 0 to 9 there are 1 to 9 labels. So, this is a classic so we will we'll try to solve we will try to build a model for this particular task and we are going to uh, we can build uh, any machine learning for model for this. But in this particular exercise we are going to use a neural network model uh, for, for the task of detecting the class of the fashion object. So, what we will do is, uh, so we will have the following. So, whenever we are, we are building a neural network model, so what are the, what are the components of neural network model? So, the first component is the architecture of the neural network model. By architecture, uh, in architecture we specify number of layers and number of units per layer. Okay. So, uh, what we will do is in this particular example we are going to build a very simple neural network model. So, we have 28 cross 28 image as an input, image as an input. So, what we do is first introduce a layer called flatten layer. What is flatten layer does is it takes this 28 by 28 pixel values and convert that into a list of 784 numbers because this is 28 by 28 there are totally 784 values or 784 cells. So, we essentially uh, you know open this up open these cells up and append rows after one, other, uh, up one after the other. So, we have these pixel values so where which are indexed between 0, 1, 2, up to 783. So, we have 784 such kind of values. So, the image which is in the matrix form is opened up in uh, in form of a list or in form of an array. So, this, this particular array becomes an input to a layer we will use one uh, hidden layer having 128 units. So, this is the first hidden layer and then we have an output layer and we have an output layer there will be 10 units. Each unit corresponds to one class. Okay. So, this is the model. So, let, let us draw this in form of network. So, this is a block representation of a neural network model. So, we have 1, 2, 7, 84 as an input, then we have 0, 1, 1, 2, 128 is the first hidden layer 
and then we have 10 units in the output layer 1, 2, so we have classes ranging from 0, 1 to 9 and these are the outputs. We connect each of this pixel. So, we are going to use a dense layer that makes sure that each or uh, each node in the previous layer is connected to uh, the node in the next layer. Okay. So, we are going to use again dense layer over here. So, each of the inputs from the first layer are getting connected to the second layer. Okay. And this is essential or model. Each of these node, let us see what they are doing. So, each of these node, so let us say we have this particular node. So, each of the node also has an additional unit called additional connection called as bias. So, each one of them has a bias. So, let us expand how one such node looks like. So, we have all 784 inputs and one additional input called as bias. Okay. And here, so in this particular node, so if you, uh, if we, what I will do is, let us draw this node slightly bigger. So, this particular node does two things. So, in the first phase, it does nothing but the linear combination. So, now what you can see is that there is a weight associated with each of the incoming arrows. Let us also put arrows here. So, information flows in this particular way. Okay. Uh, so, here first what we do is we will have we essentially do linear combination which is B plus W1, let us call them as this pixel values are X1, X2, X784, so W1, X1 all the way up to W784, X784 and then we apply some kind of a non-linear activation on this, activation on the whole thing over here. Let me represent this, uh, let us expand this in the next slide. Let me have a bigger circle which represent one neuron. We said that there is a bias. Let us call inputs as x1, x2 up to x1784 and we saw in the previous slide that we do linear combination. So, we will write this compactly say that i is equal to 1 to 784 wi xi. So, this is a linear combination that we do between, uh, so this these are the weights essentially that are flowing. W1 is a weight correspond to x1. W2 is a weight corresponding to X2 and W784 is the weight corresponding to 784th unit. So, there are all these kind of units here and we apply the nonlinear activation B plus into 784 WI XI. So, essentially we get uh, some real number over here which we pass to the activation function. In this case, uh, we are going to use ReLU uh, which is a popular choice for uh, activation function and ReLU works something like this. So, there is a real number, this is a real line. So, uh, so this is the value of let us say the value of Z which is the value coming out of the linear combination and this is the ReLU of Z. So, what happens is 
So, up to 0 for any negative number ReLU gives uh, the value of 0 and for a positive number all the positive numbers are written by ReLU. So, this is how the ReLU function looks like. So, the ReLU helps us to uh, um, you know bring in the non-linearity uh, in the equation. So, each of the uh, each of the hidden unit uh, has this particular um, computation going uh, within them. Now, coming back to uh, our collab, we write uh, this particular uh, whatever I explained just now, we write this uh, using uh, this particular code. So, we, we first use a, a flattened layer which helps us to convert the uh, array uh, you know a matrix representation metric representation of the input to uh, 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 to an array representation. So, this particular uh, flattened layer will convert this 28 by 28 representation to uh, to an array of size 784. Then we uh, have one hidden layer which we call it as dense and I just explained how the dense layer look dense layer works and dense layer has two 128 such kind of units and we are going to use a ReLU as an activation function. Finally, we have a dense layer of 10 units and each of these dense layers are using softmax as an activation function. So, the softmax layer returns an array of 10 probability scores that sum up to 1. Each node contains a score that indicates the probability that the current image belong to one of the 10 classes. Okay. Having set up the model here, now we will compile the model. Uh, so, after setting up the model what else is required for training the model? We require to uh, specify what kind of optimizer we will use for training the model. Uh, we will also specify what kind of loss functions we should be using and we also specify the metric to track during, during the training process. So, in this case we use uh, Adam which is uh, an adaptive uh, uh, which uses adaptive learning rate. So, Ad Adam as an optimizer uh, which is proven to be uh, one of the better optimizers for training uh, deep neural network models. We are using sparse categorical cross entropy loss because uh, we have uh, 10 different uh, classes uh, in, 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 in the output and we are using accuracy as a metric. Uh, as, as a measure uh, that we will be monitoring or a metric that we will be monitoring. Let us execute this particular step, I set up the model and now we will compile the model. Uh, you can also use other optimizers here like RMS prop or standard gradient descent, but Adam uh, is one of the uh, one of the default choices for uh, you know training the neural network model. So, we, we are going we are sticking with Adam. And, uh, yeah, and, and and sparse category cross entropy loss is is the is the appropriate loss for for this particular data set. Uh, I would encourage you to uh, stop at this point and try to code these things on your own and see uh, whether you are able to uh, you know replicate what we are seeing in this particular collab. After compiling the model, the next step is to train the model, and uh, we said that for training the model, we need to specify what are the training uh, we have to specify essentially training data and how uh, far or, or, or how much iteration for how many iterations we want to train the model. Uh, we also specify it is advisable to train the neural network model in a in, in, in a batch setting. So, we uh, sometimes also specify what is the what is the batch size, sometimes we also specify the regularization parameter uh, for for training. So, uh, in this case we will keep it simple being uh, this being the first model, we will simply specify the training uh, data which is training images or, or the, uh, the, the features and the labels. So, training images has all the pixel values and training labels have uh, the corresponding labels for each of the image. And we will we'll, we'll train this model for 10 epochs, you can train this model for longer. Uh, but, but since this is more of a demo session we are choosing 10 as an epoch size. Uh, you have to be careful with number of epochs if you choose if you you know train for longer epoch there is a chance that the model will uh, overfit. So, you have to watch out for overfitting 
and we are not specifying the batch size. So, uh, a default batch size of 32 will be used uh, for this particular fit function. So, let us let us train the model and see uh, where we reach. So, you can see that there is a progress bar that shows us progress. Uh, so, these are the uh, updates that we do uh, in each of the epoch and uh, you know in order to remind you an epoch is one full iteration of a training set. You can, uh, you can also see the, num uh, uh, the, the time taken per, per sample which is 92 uh, microsecond in this case uh, and uh, you can also see the loss and the accuracy numbers. Uh, you can observe that the loss is going down as we train the model further and further and accuracy goes up. So, uh, we started with loss of somewhere like 0.49 and accuracy of 0.82 and uh, after 10th iteration let us see where we reach. Yeah, so, uh, model has completed all the 10 epochs and the loss has come down to 0.23 and accuracy has gone up to uh, 91 percent. So, we started with 82 percent accuracy uh, with, uh, with the initial parameter set and after 10 epochs we got accuracy of 91 percent. Okay. Uh, so, this is this is an important part. So, we train the model at this point uh, we have a we have a model uh, by model we mean we we have a neural network model with weights learnt. So, uh, after 10th epoch we have all the weights corresponding to each edge uh, of, of the neural network. Let us use this model let us let us see how this model performs on the unseen data set and as, as we have been talking in this class or uh, you must be aware. Uh, having basic background in machine learning that we want machine learning algorithms to work well on the future data. And how do we really uh, uh, test its performance on the future data? So, we use some data as a surrogate for the future data. So, uh, we use uh, that, that particular data set is called as test data in the, in the parlance of machine learning and test data is not at all exposed during the training. So, we will evaluate the accuracy of the model on the test data. Uh, so, we will use model.evaluate function uh, which will take test images as an input and will also supply the actual labels as an output. So, actual labels help us to uh, compare the actual label with the predicted label and uh, that helps us to get uh, the, the test accuracy. So, uh, the evaluate function returns the test loss and then the test accuracy we are more interested in the accuracy part. So, we will print that particular thing out. So, uh, let us evaluate the model and uh, we got test accuracy of uh, around uh, very close to 88 percent which is uh, slightly lower than the training accuracy. The numbers uh, that you see uh, here after 10th epoch is the accuracy on the training set and uh, since we train the model on the training set, training set uh, is uh, training set always receives higher accuracy than the test set. Okay, uh, so uh, this uh, you know made uh, you know after watching uh, looking at the test accuracy, we are sure that we have we have a model of uh, of a reasonable quality. Let us use this model now to make predictions uh, because that is that is going to be our objective. Uh, we have trained the model. We will be using this model to uh, to predict the label of uh, of a new fashion item. Uh, so, the predict, uh, so we use model dot predict as a function which takes the which, which takes bunch of text images as an input and returns uh, prediction for each of the image. So, uh, let us run this on all the test images and uh, look at the prediction for the first image. Uh, so, uh, the pre this particular predictions uh, is uh, uh, so prediction for 0th image uh, is an array uh, uh, in itself. So, this array uh, you can see that there are uh, some, some float, float values here. Each of the value represent the probability. So, for example, if you take the first value, the, 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 the first value represent uh, the probability of this image uh, having uh, the, zeroth, the zeroth label. Uh, so, it, it appears that you can see that this particular image has the highest probability mass or highest probability at label 9. So, we essentially uh, will what, what we will do is we will use np.argmax function to assign uh, the label correspond, corresponding to, uh, uh, corresponding to uh, the position having the highest probability, probability mass.
So as you see, as you can say, as you can see that the highest probability mass was at at, uh, at position nine. So we assign the label nine for for the first image. Okay. So uh, let's look at what was the uh, actual label. And yes, actual label was also nine. So we know that this is a uh, this is a correct prediction. Let's let's actually uh, you know plot this in form of a graph. We will plot image, and we'll also plot. Uh, the 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 prediction value and the actual value. So we are going to use actual we are going to print actual value as well as predicted value. And uh, if the if the actual value is uh, matching with the predicted value, we will uh, use blue color. And if there is a mismatch, we'll use red. Uh, we'll use we'll be using the red color. That that information we are specifying here. And uh, here we are getting the predicted label. Uh, by doing nb dot argmax uh, just as we did it uh, over here, and uh, we are essentially getting uh, the prediction array as an input. So uh, let's look at how uh, how how does the first image looks like. So uh, what we do is for the first image uh, we supply the predictions the the predictions array. And the test label and the and the test image. So we essentially give all this information, and we try to uh, print this. So you, you can so this is the actual image, along with its label. This is the actual label which is there in the in uh, in the bracket which is ankle boot, and this is the predicted label which is again ankle boot with 99% confidence or with 99% probability. You can see that there is a very tall graph uh, at at the ankle boot. At, at a position corresponding to ankle boot. Let us look at the label for the 12th image. Yeah, so 12th image is a sneaker uh, which is correctly predicted as sneaker, but here the probability is much smaller compared to the earlier example. So this is 49 percent probability and you can see that there is a strong probability mass here of 49 percent here. But there are a couple of other possible predictions there are uh, some uh, there is substantial probability mass here. But since this is the highest probability mass, we assign it the label called uh, the label corresponding to uh, the position, which is a sneaker label. So let's plot several images along with their prediction, uh, just to see uh, you know how we do on some more images. So we are going to uh, print five rows and three columns. Each column, each each row has essentially uh, three images. And we have uh, we have he, here are the prediction for uh, first 15 objects, and you can see that in this case all the objects have been correctly classified. Some objects have been classified to the 100% uh, confidence level, uh, and so this particular sneaker example that we saw has has the least uh, confidence amongst uh, all 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 these labels that we um, all the all the objects that that are on the screen. Finally, uh, we we want to make. Uh, finally, let's understand how to make prediction for a single image. So this is uh, this is a single image uh, which has shape of 28 by 28, uh, and uh, the Keras, uh, you know, the Keras uh, prediction function is optimized to make prediction on a batch or a collection. Uh, hence, what we do is uh, we also uh, insert the single image into a collection and then send it for the prediction. So let us let us add image to a batch where it is the only member and you can see that the size of the batch is 1, 28, 28 and uh, we will pass this particular image tensor to, to the predict function and it will give us uh, uh, the prediction vector and prediction vector has uh, 10 values as we saw earlier and we will plot the, the array of uh, predicted value and, and on the x axis we have uh, you know the the labels corresponding to uh, the the names names of the label and you can see that uh, you know there is a very high probability mass on the ankle boot which is also displayed in blue so this is a correct prediction and let us do np dot argmax and you can see the label of 9 uh, just as before uh, so uh, in this particular uh, exercise we built 
uh, an image model. In this exercise, we build an image model uh, with uh, with a feed forward neural network. Uh, so this was our our, our first model uh, uh, that we build with TensorFlow uh, uh, Keras API. In 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 the next uh, in the next exercise, we'll uh, use uh, the TensorFlow Keras API to build models for structured data as well as for regression problems. See you uh, in the next module. Thank you.